Today, we're going to talk about audio basics for audio, video, and perhaps television broadcasting. But before I go into this, in broadcasting, cables are called media. Okay, not just cables or wires. But in broadcasting television, it's called media as well. Very interesting. But uh, this is a media communication because we are connecting point A to point B. Okay? And this guy, uh, this guy right here is an XLR cable. Okay? This, this cable right here, okay, is especially for microphones. Okay, we actually were connecting a few microphones a few days ago. So these are XLR, especially for microphones uh, themselves. And they come in a very big variety of, of length, from 2 meters to 200 meters. This other uh, little media cable here is, is from... A uh, microphone, XLR microphone, to the input on any camera that we might actually have. And by the way, this is the connections that we can utilize uh, on this type of cameras. Okay? So if we need to utilize a wire, wire microphone, we will plug this right in here, and this will go to the another uh, probably to a microphone, eh, not necessarily because it's too short, right? So all what I will have to do is add it to, or plug it to this guy in here, and and then I will have a microphone wire and to record with this camera. Yeah. So just in case that we don't have a wireless, we can record wire using this camera uh, or the other cameras for that matter. They still have this, the same connection, but other one, or otherwise they have XLR as well. So this is called XLR. This, is, this one right here is called um, mini uh, stereo plug. Mini stereo plug it has three, um, three connections in here. One is ground, left, and right. Okay, so this is a mini a stereo plug. Got it? Good, 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 good. All right. This one right here is the uh, opposite uh, of the, the microphone, the cable that we just had in hand. This one is, for example, uh, if I want to connect my computer audio or any audio source to the soundboard, the one that you already uh, saw on the control room, okay? I want audio from the computer. Uh, I will plug this into the mixer, uh, channel and ch different channels, okay? And we have the audio for. Uh, this is a stereo as well, a stereo, mini jack, and XLR males in uh, the other end. We have one more media cable. This one is uh, an SDI cable, okay? This, this, this cable right here is for um, transporting, so to speak, communicating video from the camera uh, to a recorder or to a video switcher. Uh, is SDI, it stands for what? Remember? I mentioned this a few days ago. Serial Digital Interface. Write it down. Serial Digital Interface with a connection uh, with the plugs called BNC. Uh, those actually, you insert those onto the BNC connectors on the uh, video switcher. You twist it and it's locked. This is the best way to co connect the camera and the video switcher so and it stays plugged in. You plug it in, twist it, and it's locked. It doesn't actually uh, get disconnected. 
Um, SDI, Serial Digital Interface with BNC connectors, right here. Chapter number six. All right. Um, the objectives of this, okay, is to ex explain uh, with detail audio for television production. Audio is, you know, uh, is so important for me. As for me, I will say um, more than video. But I'm not saying you can give me a crappy video uh, resolution. Uh, it's going to be dark. The white balance won't be, it won't be performed as it needs to be done, etc., etc. But let's say that something happens with the video image itself, you know, that whatever could just happen while recording on camera. But, but if I don't have the audio understandable and clear, and then, uh, wait a minute, and that will be senseless to actually put a video out because if, uh, the audio is not there to understand. So important, and make sure that you are keeping the audio Okay, uh, the negative 12 that it needs to be while you take the video to the editing timeline. How important is to utilize the pickup pattern? The pickup pattern is, is going to be a cardio, super cardio, directional, uh, omnidirectional, and that, all that we need to make sure that we use the proper microphones uh, to our recording. Um, right in class, we have most of the video, I mean, of the microphones that I have for you guys are with a pickup, excuse me, with a pickup pattern of at least, it have to be directional, okay? So, and a few bi-directional bi and, um, and a couple of omnis as well, because that will... It, it, when it's recording, it records the proper direction of the audio. I can have the microphone here, but if the mic is, is uh, bi-directional, what's going to happen? No, no, my voice will be on the mic, but most is going to be a lot of noises as well. All right, I'm going to recap in Spanish. Okay, el objetivo uh, es explicar qué importante es el audio para, no necesariamente en, para en televisión, pero en video producción uh, alrededor, ¿ok? Y vamos a identificar eso, bueno, no necesariamente vamos a identificar la clase de micrófonos porque eso lo hablamos ayer, ¿ok? Pero también importante que es el, el, el pattern que usa el micrófono, si es, si es direccional, si tiene dos direcciones o es multidirección, dependiendo la aplicación que vamos a grabar. Por ejemplo, una entrevista. Ok. So, um, when we take that video, the footage to our um, timeline, we're going to see the VU meters, which VU meter, voltage units, voltage units is what it means, VU meter, B meter is voltage units. Victor, unit. Uh, those will actually are the readout of the levels of your audio. And you will actually see that when you have it on your timeline uh, you will see those meters obviously going up and down. How loud, uh, you know, or, or um, high, or or that will be maybe I hope not way distorted audio. So very important on that. All right, let's. Audio is, bi is vital, important for getting messages across that cross in film and television and audio video production in general. See, sound serves one or more functions. Voice track, take note of this please. Voice, sound serves one or more functions. 
voice track, music and sound effects, environmental sound, and room tone. Voice track is the most important part because that is your microphone with your voice. Music and sound effects, just in case you need some music background underneath, uh, and sound effects if you want just to hear some uh, uh, effects, well, perhaps putting a, a graphic, and that comes your lower third and your graphics onto the screen, okay? Uh, environment, I think you will want to just have it some sort of, uh, and these two guys right here will be almost together, okay? Room, to room tone, and environmental uh, sounds. So the audio won't be that dry only with your voice. Ok, esas son las funciones del audio, ok, muy importante. Uh, el track del, de la voz es uno. Música eh, y, y efectos pues, es el número dos. Uh, sonidos de, del ambiente y el tono del cuarto donde estamos grabando. El track del audio, por supuesto, es el micrófono que usamos acá. Y tiene que, ser, eh, eh, tiene que tener el volumen más, más alto a los negativos 12. Eh, música y sound effects, bueno, puede llevar música de fondo o algunos efectos ah, cuando ponemos gráficas en la, en la pantalla, etc. El ambiental, ah, es, es, a veces es muy importante que lleve un poco de audio del ambiente para que no se escuche muy seca nuestra voz cuando grabamos, ¿ok? Y, y va a tener un poquito más de cuerpo el audio. Eh, el, el, el tono del cuarto es casi va con lo mismo del uh, el ambiental, ¿ok? Uh, esas son las, las funciones importantes del audio. All right. ¿Can I move? Uh, let's say that let's say that this is our timeline. Okay? This is a track uh, video. Okay? And, and this right here it's going to be audio. We want to have our main track. Okay. We want to have another track in here. Oh, look at that. Nice. Look at my lines. They're very straight, huh? Very cool. Look at that. And I'm going to draw another one. And why is it goes there? I don't know. So, something with the board. I'm, no, it's not my hand, I promise you. Because why it just went here? So, video here, right? And this is our main audio track. Right here. Voice. And then we have music. Background. Okay, and... And then, right here, we have our sound effects. So we can have, um, so we can have one, two, and three uh, audio layers. Why is it that I have, can someone tell me why is it that I have these two separate? As you, as, when you read it, it says, um, uh, it says music and background, right? That doesn't really stipulate that it's, that, that it's going to be together. The, 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 music, the music and the sound effects won't be in the same track. I'm going to have my music in the very low, subtly, right there, on, right to just give me the mood of the music. Very right here underneath. My voice is going to be right here. Let's say that I want to throw a, uh, and let's, for example, today the weather, okay? 
And you want to throw this as a graphic, right? And comes to, a sc to the screen. And then we throw in sound effects, a sip in a script. Or, and then we put a, uh, another one, because the graphic came in here. But I, now I want the graphic out, out of the screen. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put right here, sip out, and So those are the sound effects that you can put in here. Vroom, vroom, bringing, pop, pop. You see how, how uh, the, your phone has stopping noises, uh, or perhaps, perhaps uh, sounds. You can actually add those stopping uh, effects here as well. But, and when we go to the volume, we control individual. The most important part Boys, girls, is that we can control the audio levels by soundtrack. And they are not all together. And no are just a mess. How do you like my the graphic? It's kind of cool, huh? Look at, my lines are very straight. So. We're good? Awesome. All right, let's go back to this thing here. So, uh, all right, where did my remote? I think with my remote. Aha, all right. So we go in uh, boys track. This one can be recorded two ways. That can be recorded while you are doing your video in real time. And of course, your camera has a microphone. Or, <coughs> but it says right here, on camera, narration, or dialogue. Or, off camera, narration, or voice over. So let's say that you want to add some graphics or pictures or any other B-roll to your main video track, you will bring the audio as a voiceover. What it means is you can record that later on, okay, and put it right on top of your, uh, with your graphics as a B-O, voiceover. Voiceovers, yes! Kind of cool, huh? Can I move? Yeah, I move. Dos maneras de cómo grabar el audio track, ¿ok? Uno se llama on camera, que lo grabamos en la cámara mientras se graba el video, o Voice over quiere decir que es la voz sobre tal uh, track. Grabamos, un, ponemos unas gráficas, unas fotografías y queremos hablar de eso. Entonces podemos traer nuestro voice over, nuestro uh, voice track y la ponemos en el timeline así de esa manera. <coughs> all right, music and sound effects. You need to actually take note of all this stuff, but Music and sound effects, the only thing that I really want you to uh, get is this. Uh, the music and sound effects, what it does is set a mood or enhance action and emotions on particular scenes. Okay? So those will be the, the only two reasons why is it that I will need that. To set a mood, do you know that if we watch a movie and it has no sound, no music, it will be so boring. I can't just want to watch a movie 
And it's going to be a lot of action on the movie. It's going to be crazy motion on that movie. But no sounds? Goodness sake, I just, I change it. You don't have to copy the rest. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about this. And set the mood and enhance action and emotions or scene. That's the two things that I want you to just uh, copy now. Okay? So, um, but let's see if I watch. I want you to try it, um, you know, from, you know, maybe over a week and try it. Put a movie that is full of action. Get an Indiana Jones movie. Get a, a Terminator or a Transformer. But I want you to mute the volume. Watch it with no audio. And let's see what happens. You want to say, oh my God, this is boring. This is not the way that director intended. So, go and repeat the same essence that you already watched and then pump the audio way to the top. Well, not to the top because it's you might probably break some glass at your house, okay? Um, between parentheses, when I watch a movie at my house, and I watch a movie that is action-packed, science fiction is my favorite genre of movies. You know, most of the time, I watch it when, when I'm alone over the weekend for something, because I know the, the sound will be very loud, especially the sound. It's going to be very shake. It will shake a few things on the walls. So, but in order to, for me to enjoy that movie, it have to be loud. Uh, environmental sounds, that is clear. <clears throat> that is very clear. What is environmental sounds? What are going to be natural sounds, not sounds? That will be uh, birds, wind, um, the, uh, there will be perhaps more people talking on the, you know, right uh, of the environment. Uh, that is natural sounds on it. More often is when you're going to be using on B-roll. Okay? I'm going to move on. Um, <clears throat> okay? What happened? Ay, ay, ay. All right. Uh, um, environmental sounds manipulations. Okay? Uh, news programming actually do that. Modify only to ensure reporters is heard. Those are sent via some uh, headphones or earbuds to the camera operator. No, no, yeah, to the camera operator and to the reporter on camera. They going to hear something on their ears. For hey, we're gonna go on air. The control room on the TV station will tell the, the reporter on their ears, hey, we go in five, four, three. And that reporter needs to just be smiling and say, oh, reporting from downtown Dallas. And you can see I am right in the middle of this parade, which is beautiful, da 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 da. And that goes the, uh, the whole ordeal. But she's listening, or he's listening through some. Headphones, ear, earbuds in here say, we come back to studio in five, wrap it up, five, four, thank you, we're going to come back, we go back to the studio. So that is what manipulation of audio, that's for reporters only. <clears throat> All right, now, what I need you to talk is this. What is considered unethical to alter the natural sounds of a news story? And when actually that could happen? Can someone tell me a, an example that when this could happen? When is it that could happen that, I, that someone will alter audio in a news, especially on the newscast? Um, no, kind of close. Just, just, um, Consider that we are unethical, changing something on the audio. I'm going to give you one example. Let's say that I, uh, that I, have, I have an interview uh, with Chase. Okay? Chase, right? Mm -hmm. And by the time I take the video to post, 
I want to actually apply a sound effect to his voice, and he doesn't know. He, he, I, I didn't actually make him aware of that. Oh. And he will sound, oh, either he will sound cool, or he will sound, depending that pitch that I, you know, I, will, I can change the pitch, and he will sound like a, you know, like a uh, Looney Tune talking on the screen. So that is, you know, altering the audio, changing something on the audio. And that's unethical. First, why is it unethical? Because I didn't let him know. Hey, dude, I'm going to change the audio. Uh, your voice, I'm going to put a, a sound effect. You know what? It's going to sound like that. Do you like the idea? And can you sign right here? Ah, you see? So now we actually, we are on the same page. And he is agree. We're good. It's nothing uh, unethical that I have to worry about it. And that is only one example. And we can go um, a few more, but that's the deal. So, questions? Room tone, right here, I have room tone. That is, uh, is it sounds natural, my mic to the camera, and as the tone of this room. Uh, no, no, and uh, the will be on. There will be practically the audio. The, that that's all. That's not necessarily the audio, but all sound. But whatever this room is, is empty or is full of people, it will give it will, will give me more body for the audio portion, and it won't sound that dried. But if I am by myself, let's say uh, in, a, in a cathedral, in a cathedral, and it will sound very echoey, that right there is a room tone, obviously. All right, so you don't have to copy all that stuff. Okay. So this is important. Remember, I I showed you uh, on the studio. Say, okay, quiet on the set, and we'll let. Room tone, it's not tone, no, no, any, uh, anything goes. Room tone is just the name. Room tone is just quiet, quiet a set, three seconds, right, approximately, and then I start counting down. Five, four, three, two. But my, my room tone, it comes after I say quiet a set, about two seconds of silence and then we go for the countdown. So that's what it is. <clears throat> because while we record the room tone, guess what? We want to find audio that, wait a minute, what is that? Oh, that's the air conditioning. And uh, you see, so we want to actually, we want to capture the audios, the, the audio that we don't probably even need. But the room tone, it needs to be just to just make sure that nothing is there before our presenters start talking. All right, that it is. That is not true silence, obviously not, because it's going to be sounds for whatever is it there. It, it, it won't be very quiet 100%. All right, sound frequencies. Remember we talked about this a few days ago. Look at that. A low frequency is what actually the gamma of, of that actually compiles a sound itself. Example, low frequency sounds, bass guitar, bass drum, and the tuba. If we, if we put that into a graph and we see that those, those those sounds or frequencies would be, uh, let's say, I'm going to measure right here. Let's say about 15 to 20 hertz. The bass. That is right here, 20 hertz. Same side with the bass. The bass drum. Which one is the bass drum? The big guy right on the floor, huh? Boom. That's the, that's the, especially the key to keep the beat of the music. Dum, 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 dum. Those are low frequencies. Any other example of low frequency? Does a whistle count as a low frequency or is it still mid 
Which one? Whispering. What is that? Whispering? Well, that will depend on the body or your voice. I can be whispering. I still feel some frequencies. Remember, we're talking the frequency, but not the level. Okay? Frequency is one thing, and level is another thing. Oh, today we're going to talk about our audio frequencies and how is it those going to affect our ears in a one way or another. Very low frequency, right? Can someone actually say that in a high pitch frequency? Come on. Help me out. Come right here. Say, today we're going to talk about sound frequencies. Give me, let me give you an example of a very high frequency. I, I, I'm not good at this. Oh, come on. Oh, me, Mr. Seguero, I'm going to give you the example at a very low frequency. And even you can see my face <laughs> changes when I'm talking low frequency. But now, Julian is going to do the high frequency on it. Let's hear the guy I'm going to sound like a chipmunk. It's okay. I want to hear it. Um. Today, we're going to <laughs> Today we're going to talk about frequencies. This is a high pitch frequency. Here we go. Oh, I, love, I love it. I love it. Here we go. So, high frequencies and very low. Hum from which to where is this the, the frequencies that our ears can capture? From what number? That was, I said that a few days ago. From 20 hertz Hundred and uh, uh, I'm sorry, twenty thousand hertz, and the hertz is like a circle. Woo, 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 woo. That's what actually that the speed how uh, that is an example of how the it, the audio frequency is created. Mm. Ooh, ooh. And, and when it changes the tone, and it's uh, the the um the pitch increases. So, mid-range, trumpets, clarinets, and French horns, alto and tenors vocalist. A human speaking voice dies, most likely my tone is gonna to be probably in the mid-range. Because I already did my example, oh, this is low. I today wanna talk about that, the chipmunks. No, oh my God, you see how it sounds very fun. So, and then I went to the, all the way high. High frequency sounds like flutes, piccolo, soprano, vocalists, and so forth. And even crazy chipmunks. Oh, any um, Looney Tunes. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> hey, thank you, Julian. All right, anybody still taking notes here? You got it? Oh, good. Sound frequency continuation. Factors into choosing microphones and recording uh, music. We need to, like I said in the beginning, very important that we need to pick up the right microphone for the respective frequencies. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to stop right here and to say it in Spanish. Las frecuencias hay bajas y altas. Ya nos escuchaste hacer el ridículo, ¿verdad? Como sonar como sapo, pop, 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 pop. Y el chipman acá, que lo hizo muy bien. Okay. Esa es la, la frecuencia baja o la frecuencia alta. Eh, y los ejemplos es como la guitarra del bajo, el, 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 ba, el, el bombón, que se le llama al, en el drum set, y la tuba. ¿Anybody in here, here knows how to play that thing? No. No, the... That's a big thing right here. That was heavy, I guess. 
Y luego tenemos las frecuencias en mediano, que son las trompetas, clarinetes, y los horns, que son las trompetas francesas. A los tenores que cantan también. A mí no me gusta la música de esa canción. Así como cantan tenores, no, no sé, no me gusta. La, la voz humana normalmente está en, el, en, el, en lo que es la, el, el, el rango mediano, ¿ok? Uh, no sonamos como sapos, ¿verdad? Ni tampoco sonamos como los Looney Tunes. Simplemente es normal. La frecuencia alta la tenemos en lo que es las flautas, los pícolos y los sopranos. No. Yo creo que se me trabarían la, las cuerdas vocales si trato yo de hacer un sonido del soprano ahorita. Mejor la dejamos ahí. Okay. All right. Algo muy importante era de que si vamos a elegir el micrófono adecuado y eso va a ser cómo las frecuencias van a, a resultar. Okay. Sabemos el micrófono que se va a usar. Ok, uh, y esto es lo que yo la verdad quería mostrarles muy importante. This is something that I really wanted to show you all. This is a microphone, uh, the physical form of a mic, ok. Uh, the wire, this is the wire here, obviously, I already showed you that, XLR cable. Uh, this is a magnetic um, field right here that creates, that is the one that creates all The, that field into electrical pulses and they will go to the wire to the soundboard. Um, this is the element that vibrates, that it actually creates, practically is the one that creates a frequency, okay? Uh, and a sound pickup is going right here and right here. So this is the diaphragm right here that makes the audio The, the, the proper audio frequency itself. The diaphragm that vibrates, vibrates a coil, which is this one here, this one right here, uh, does this. So whenever that we are using a microphone, we need to be very careful with the mic not to drop it because we could just damage this part right here. Okay? So. Uh, wiring wireless mics, both have the advantage and disadvantages, okay? I like wire mics, especially if I'm doing a concert, I want to have a wire mic, okay? Especially that if a concert, okay? And first of all, I don't want a fail in a wireless mic, okay? Convenience because the singer is going places with the mic. Like right here with me, I can just go with this microphone all over the place and my voice is still going to be picked up by the receiver on the camera, okay? But it's as use it, you know, using it right here as a, um, you know, a consumer situation, okay, a uh, school perhaps, I don't risk much. If it loses it, okay, a gun, audio gun. I figured that out, I will find it when I hit the stop and take the video to my timeline and say, wait a minute, the microphone went offline from this point forward. Uh, and metaphorically, I'm going to be dead because my, uh, my video won't, it won't be good at all. So quality of mics are related to cost. So if I want a wireless microphone and I want the quality of sound frequency wise, it's going to cost me money. So when you hear music from the uh, famous uh, singers, give me one name. Uh, a fam a fam famous one that you actually your music. Uh, Tyler. Huh? Tyler, Tyler the okay. So whenever he goes to a concert, he presents a concert, and his microphone needs to be just precisely perfect, not a risk. So that microphone, it might cost between three, five, or seven thousand dollars because it needs to fulfill some very critical requirements. We we don't need a margin of failing uh, in a concert. So wire for me, wireless for so many. 
The wireless is slightly less expensive than the wireless, obviously, because of the convenience of wireless, you can fly everywhere with it. Cables run up to 200 feet with no loss of signal. So we can have a cable, an XLR, okay, all through this hallway, all the way to the end, it's 200 feet, the audio will be precisely as I'm really expecting from the mic. Uh, longer runs may need amplifier to keep signal, okay? Over the 200 and so feet, we're gonna need something in between to preamp that, that audio mic. Very important. Uh, remember, the gaffer does this. Tape, tape cables down to the floor to avoid tripping hazards, okay? Very important. Uh, coils and storage, coil and storage all cables after use, okay? This is a cable coil right here. When I was, when I was um, part of my training on television, when I start, the cables, I needed to do, I needed to coil those cables on the floor, okay? <clears throat> and those, those cables were not short anyways, okay? Let me, let me show you one uh, way Oh, Lordy. Okay. What happened here? Okay. Almost there. Almost there. Oh, my gosh. This is not what I was expecting. One and entangle my cable so bad. There we go. So, I have this cable right here. How many wires this cable actually has in its jacket? Can someone, someone guess? Three. Three, very good. And the reason is because we, three pins, right? So three wires in here. So, the way that I actually learned or they taught me was to do it in number eight figure, okay? And so I needed to do this and here and here. That is one way that they actually taught me how to do it, okay? But let me tell you, and then we grab it from the middle. Boom. It will be properly coiled. Not the mess that I have. This one's is not, this one's, this type right here is not necessary to do that. You just want to do this right here, softly. Don't type because this is not a rope. This is not a cowboy thing, okay? No, just softly, just go and turn it, okay, here. And I'm going to explain you why is it that this one is not a need. Okay, just have it right. Here we go. Reason why they taught me on the number eight figure is because the cables that we actually were, we, we were coiling, they had 16 little wires inside the jacket. So the cable was this thick. He called coax cables, okay? So, but it has 16 little baby cables in it. And if we will do this, or we just crimple, or we just tangle that up in the wrong way, we were risking for those little baby wires just to break. And those cables back in the day were so expensive. So we needed to just follow that direction here in the number eight, to make sure that those, those wires uh, uh, inside the jacket were properly you know, coiled in the same direction. So as this one right here, not a need. You know, of course, we need to do it very gentle. There's only three wires in it, in the jacket. Questions? We good? All right, I think we're gonna stop right here. And we're going to actually uh, get ready for lunch.